Hello! This is a work log of my Princess Star cosplay, so if you want to see a bit of how I made it, then just continue watching. So for the first thing, buying fabric, um, there weren't any fabric that wasn't more than like one or two blue colors. So I had to go with this plain, boring cotton fabric. Because Sweden isn't the best place when it's come to fabric. I started with making a circle skirt, which is when you fold the fabric four times and then cut out this kind of half circle thing. And then it's a big circle skirt, but um, it didn't turn out in the end. But it was a good base and it got me thinking how I wanted the whole thing to look, I suppose. So uh, it's fine. I'll get there. I attached this string with the length of where like the top of the ruffle was gonna be. I'll show you better later. Okay, I had no idea how I wanted this kind of color part to be. I wanted it to be kind of ruffly like the skirt, but that didn't turn out good at all. So by this point, I realized that the skirt is too short. Um, I kind of thought about it before, but um, I mean, I've been working on it for so long, but I was so stubborn that no, it's gonna be fine, it's gonna be fine, but uh, no. This was the longest the skirt could be for being a circle skirt, so later I did a uh, not circle skirt. But yeah, I had to redo this whole thing. All of this you see here, I remade it from scratch. So let's buy some more fabric, yay! <laughs> How did I make the sleeves so poofy? Well, I actually had three layers of petticoat material, as to say, um, ruffled up inside, and then I had a tiny piece of the sleeve underneath. It's so poofy, I love it! And I hand stitched this strap to make it really pretty. So now I'm remaking the skirt, yay! Look, look how much longer. It's not even that much longer, but it was enough that I wanted to remake the whole thing, so... So I actually used fabric straps instead of strings, because it was better. Why I use straps like this is because when I was gonna make the ruffles, I know where the top part of the ruffle thingy was gonna be because of the straps inside. You can see here, I feel where the ruffle is and then I sew the, the ruffle in place. And oh, both of the ruffly skirts were like double layered to make the ruffles really fluffy and nice. I used the old skirt as a kind of pattern for the new one, so I know where the gap in the front should be and stuff like that. For the vest, I just took an old vest I had laying around and made a pattern. Then I just kind of eyeballed some details and some extra things like the bottom part of the vest. I finally made up my mind and made the color, the front part, a bit more cartoony. And I just, you know, took two pieces and turned them inside out. It's a kind of, I don't know, cheap way. I wanted it to be more 
realistic or something. But in the end, this was the only thing I could come up with. And now, the wand. So I found this styrofoam ball that was just the size I wanted. And I just, I don't know, carved out the inside a bit down. And also this paper roll that was covered in plastic bags from the store. I don't know what they're called. I'm gonna make mine light up, but if you're not gonna do that, then this step is not necessary. Can you guess how many coats of glue I put on this thing? Ten! Ten layers of wood glue on this little ball to make it really smooth and not so breakable. The wings are made of foam and I took two pieces and glued them together to make them even thicker. The hearts on the dress were also made of this material. For the inside of the wand and the wings and the heart I used this drill from my friend's dad's garage. I want my own little handier one but I mean I don't have one so just borrowed theirs instead. The crown is made of warbler and I covered it up and sprayed it with some gold spray paint. Though I did a bit too much, so I used this little sponge and dabbed on some yellow also. Oh my gosh guys, the star was the hardest part I think. So I didn't know what material I wanted to use. So first I tried this really hard plastic vinyl I think. But it was too thick, so after many ideas I switched to this plastic. It's that kind of plastic you find in notebooks. You know, some pages are a bit harder plastic material. Really recommend that, guys. Then I painted it from the inside to make the outside look really smooth. I also covered up the other parts so it was easier to paint. For the flat part I actually used nail polish because, I don't know, I found the right blue colors and I just thought that it's easier to make a smooth finish with nail polish, I guess. Thanks so much to my mom to coming up with the idea to use earrings for these little balls on the crown because they're so round and much better than like using clay or my other ideas and they already have this little stick <laughs> thing so it was really easy to just use these ones. Okay, so I want to be able to change the batteries of my wand, of course. So I cut out this little hole on the side that's gonna be hidden by one of the wings. And then I'm gonna take on and off the wing by magnets. Some of the details on the wand are made of just clay, just female clay. And oh, here, here's my horn for my Toriel cosplay also. The little crown and the golden circle are both made of warbler. So for the little heart I made a mold, like a teeny little clay heart and then made a clay base around it, a few hearts. And then I used see-through kind of clay to make the tiny hearts. Then I put a hole in the back of the heart and on the little flat surface here and so the lights could stick into the hearts to make them light up so pretty. I wanted the star to be attached to put it from the upside down to the flat surface. But that was a bad idea because it, there was no way it was gonna fit just exactly. So instead later I put it from the back side up. You, you will see later. 
I first thought of attaching the crown with this, but I later used bobby pins instead. Uh, mm, so the color just fell right off when I taped the back side to make it stick together. So I used this glue later to um, make the star into its shape. You, you can see here are the gaps. It needs glue to be like one star piece. <laughs> so I used this glue and then some masking tape on the back side to make them stick together really well. Though some of the color will actually a bit come off, but you won't see that that much. It will still be on the inside of the whole prop, so it's fine. Now for the lights. My friend Jewel were the one that helped me with this. Um, and it's 10 tiny lights, man. It was really hard to make them stick together. I really wish I'd just used like four of these. Um, because now, much later, uh, some of the lights are not working. Like the whole pink part are just not working anymore. But I mean, it worked on the competition and the first month, so it's fine, I guess. But yeah, use less light, guys. <laughs> At least in this tiny little space. So the socks are actually hand stitched, these kind of ruffly parts are hand stitched and they're also stitched to my tights to make them define gravity. And the shoes are painted with acrylic paint because I'm a noob. <laughs> the staff took me 40 hours to make. <laughs> but I mean if you don't do the light thing then it will go much faster. And everything else took me 100 hours to make. But I mean, I redid a lot of things, so maybe it wouldn't have taken that long if I knew what I was doing, but I don't. I'm a noob. I'm a magical princess from another dimension. I competed with this last night on Winter, but I didn't win anything. But I did get to go to the after judging, which a lot of the contestants didn't get to do. So, I mean, it was something at least. And then I competed later at KodachiCon, but I didn't win anything there either. That was everything from this cosplay journey. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye bye!